here are some more examples for us to do. So what we want to do now is that we want to say, given the following function and the values for a, we want to answer the following questions. First off, should the derivative be positive or negative? So f prime of a greater than zero means positive, f prime of a less than zero means negative. Then we want to find f prime of a, and then we want to write the equation in the tangent line to go along with our graph. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I want to graph this guy. So the square root of x looks like this. Okay, and when a equals 4, my y value will equal 2. And the slope of the tangent line, if I look at it from left to right, is increasing. So I know that f prime of 4 should be greater than 0, so it should be positive. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Henry definition because it's my favorite. Okay, so I'm going to have f of 4 plus h minus f of 4 divided by h. So that will give me the limit as h approaches 0 of the square root of 4 plus h. Remember, whatever's in between these parentheses for f gets plugged in for your x value minus f of 4, so the square root of 4 is 2, so it'll be minus 2, divided by h. Now again, if I just go ahead and plug in um, 0 for my h value, what I'm going to get is I am going to get 0 over 0, so I need to do more work. Now, notice that when we look at this, we have a square root here. Now, whenever you see a square root, what that should tell you is that you need to multiply by the conjugate. So let's go ahead and multiply by 4 plus h plus 2 divided by the square root of 4 plus h plus 2. Now, when we do that, what that's going to do is that's going to get rid of that square root. So we're just going to have plain old 4 plus h. Okay, remember the middle terms are going to cancel out because when you FOIL it, you're going to have a negative 2 and a positive 2. They'll cancel. So then you're just going to have negative 2 times positive 2, which will give you negative 4. Remember, don't factor at the bottom. It's actually going to work in your advantage to keep it factored like this. So don't FOIL it out. Just leave it. Now what we see is these 4s are going to cancel out. The H on the top will cancel out with the H on the bottom. So we are going to be left with the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of 4 plus h plus 2, which if we plug in 0 for our h value is going to be 1 over the square root of 4 plus 2, which will be 1 fourth. All right, cool. Now the other thing that we wanted to do was actually find the equation of our tangent line. So we have m equals 1 fourth. We also have the point 4 comma 2. So the equation for our tangent line would be y minus 2 equals 1 fourth times x minus 4. And remember, you can just leave it like this if you like. Okay, if you're really down with the slope-intercept form, what you could do is that you could distribute that 1 fourth so you'd have y minus 2 equals 1 fourth x minus 1. Add 2 to both sides, and you get y equals 1 fourth x plus 1. Either answer is totally fine. All right, let's go ahead and look at the next one. So we're going to have f of x equals 1 over x, and a equals 1. So the first thing we want to do is graph this guy. So 1 over x is going to look like this. And if we let x equal 1, our y coordinate, remember 1 over 1, that would also equal 1. And our tangent line would look like this. So f prime of 1 is going to have a what kind of slope, positive or negative? Well, if we look at this, from left to right, it's going down. So that means it's going to be a negative slope, so no, less than 1. Alright, let's go ahead and use that definition again to find the derivative. So the limit as h approaches 0, f of 1 plus h, 
minus f of 1 divided by h. So that will be the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over 1 plus h minus 1 all divided by h. Now again, if you go ahead and just plug that 0 in, you're going to get 0 over 0, so we need to do a little bit more work. So what we need to do is that we need to find a common factor between these two guys on top. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply this one by 1 plus h over 1 plus h. Here's what that's going to give me. That will give me the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over 1 plus h minus 1 plus h over 1 plus h all over h. Now because they have a common denominator, I can put the tops together. So it will be 1 minus 1 plus h divided by 1 plus h. Now I don't like triple decker fractions, so instead of doing dividing by h right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by 1 over h. So dividing something into h's is the same as multiplying it into 1 over h's. So this is going to simplify to the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 minus 1 minus h divided by 1 plus h times 1 over h. Now we're going to get some pretty sweet cancellation here. What's going to happen is that these 1's are going to cancel, leaving a negative h on top. That negative h will cancel with that h. So we are going to be left with the limit as h approaches 0 of negative 1 over 1 plus h, which if we plug in 0 is going to give us negative 1 for our slope. So the equation for a tangent light then is going to be y minus 1 equals negative 1 times x minus 1. All right, now the next question asks us to find, given 3x minus 1, we want to find a general A. So first off, if I graph 3x minus 1, I'm going to go ahead and do it in red. <clears throat> okay, what I'm going to have is I'm going to have a straight line. Now remember, this straight line is going to have a slope of 3. We know that from that 3 there. Now here's the deal, if I pick any point on this line and draw the tangent line, that tangent line is going to sit right on top of our other line. So that means our tangent line should always also have a slope of 3 because they're going to be the same line, right? So let's prove that. Let's do the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a. Remember, we're keeping it general a, so we're not actually plugging in a number for this. So that would be the limit as h approaches 0 of 3 times a plus h minus 1 minus 3a plus, or I'm sorry, minus 1 all over h. Remember, we're subtracting that entire function, so we have to put these parentheses around there because we're going to distribute that negative. So that's going to give us the limit as h approaches 0 of 3a plus 3h minus 3 minus 3a plus 3. Oh. So what that's going to give us is 3a plus 3h minus 1 minus 3a plus 1 all over h. Now we're going to have some amazing cancellation here. The 3a's are going to cancel. The negative 1 and positive 1 are going to cancel. So we're going to be left with 3h over h. That means that those h's will cancel. So what we'll be left with is 3. What this means is that any time you have a function that's a linear equation, y equals, 3, uh, or y equals mx plus b, the derivative is going to have the same slope. All right. Now, the very last one is that given the function f of x, which is in this uh, graph to the right, 
we want to find the following. So we want to find what f prime of 1 is, f prime of 4, f prime of 6, 7, and 8. Now, what does f prime mean? It means what's the slope at that point? So if we look at f prime of 1, which is right here, we're looking at what's the slope at this point. Well, since it is a horizontal line, that means that it's going to have a slope of what? It means it's going to have a slope of 0. Now, if we look at f prime of 4, okay, what's the slope of this line here? Well, remember that slope is rise over run. So we're going to go up 1 and over 2. So if we do rise over run, that is going to be a rise of 1 over a run of 2. So we're going to have a slope of 1 half. All right, now if we want to find, doo -doo -doo, if we want to find the slope at 6, that's going to be a little bit more difficult, but not impossible. What we're going to do here is we're going to draw the tangent line, okay? And we're just going to play around and see if we can find what the slope is. Okay, so if I look here, it kind of looks like I'm almost going at like a perfect 45 degree angle, okay? Which means I would probably go up to and over to, which means I'm probably going to have a slope of about positive 1. Now if I look at the other side, let's go ahead and look at 8, for example. Oops. 8. It looks like it's going to have an equal but opposite slope. So because it's going to have an equal and opposite slope, what I can do is I can use symmetry and say, oh, that's going to have a slope of about negative 1. Now last but not least, what would the slope be at 7? So if I drew the tangent line at 7, again, I would have a horizontal tangent line. And what is the slope of a horizontal line? It is 0. All right, the last question says, for what values of x does f prime not exist? And let's explain. Well, here's the deal, is that remember that f prime is defined as a limit. Now, since the slope is defined as a limit, what that means is that my slope better be the same coming from the left as from the right. So if I look at my graph here, one of the issues I see is that 3, for example, as I approach from the left-hand side, my slope is 0. As I approach from the right-hand side, my slope is 1 half. Now those slopes don't match up, so I wouldn't have a derivative there. The other place I would fail to have a derivative would be at 5, because I have this drastic change, or I have this crook in my graph. So because I don't have a nice, smooth change, that means that instead of approaching a number very gradually, I would change in a snap. So my derivative would not exist at the point x equals 3 and x equals 5 because the slopes, instead of gradually approaching a number, change on a dime. Okay, we're going to explore that more in the next section as well.